especially those of us who have a compelling visual in front of us. I know that when I see somebody I care about, I'm like, or let alone several people I care about, there's a leap of joy in my front body. And there's no reason to suppress that. There's no reason to have less joyous front. It is, however, an opportunity to open those wings in the back and really feel for, oh, we can feel for each other in the back. And we can, even though we're represented on the screen with an, with an upper torso and a face, we can feel for, I have a pelvis. We can feel for that quality of being like a boulder in a field that nobody would bother to move. They would just plow around it. And our legs and our feet so that we can feel for our ground connection. It would be nice if we would like to send a little bit of extra sheriff of love pulse through our feet especially because while I have the great good fortune of having met all of you, you have not met each other necessarily. And so sending the way the tree roots can share enzymes and share nutrients and share flavor, it would be nice as sheriff of love to play host a little bit to the rest of the group and through your tree rootlets, let the rest of the group know some really simple things about yourself. Like, are you generally well-meaning? Just sending essence of trickle of well-meaningness through the ground into the group heart is a very nice thing. It's a very nice thing that we can do for each other. We can even, if we like, from our sense of connection to the big heart, which we, which we can take an extra moment to feel, is there something that we know of that we call by the name of love? Mm -hmm. Love? Yeah. And we can, if we like, from the heart, through the pelvis, through the legs, through the feet, it may be a little bit shy, but it's a kind of shyness that is so deeply appreciated by everybody else. Send a little bit of our awareness of knowing what love is, or at least this is kind of the idea that I have. I kind of <laughs> have this feeling that there's this thing <laughs> and I like it, it's good. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Ah, again, I'm feeling such a rush of joy. And my response to that rush of joy is to make a bigger container immediately. It's like become a reflex and I'm wanting to share it with you because my hope is that there will be a great deal of joy without cantilever. Oh, joy, more back body space wider pelvis, bigger boulder sitting in the field, even more sharing into the ground. Nice. Mm -hmm. Bismillah. I have, as is my usual, uh, my usual practice, I have a structured plan for our time which is open to mutiny from the divine, no matter who the divine erupts through. So please know that I both, you know, I do generally have something that I think would be a good idea and a listening from the heart for what emerges. And the first thing I really wanted to do before even introducing ourselves was in fact just this review of, we are here first in this format. And then I also would like to try a group phone call for the second part of this. To learn something about being supportive and being in health. 
and using the whole heart connection practices online. Mm -hmm. So I would love for us to introduce ourselves twice because actually I found that in my experiments to be most effective. Once to go around saying, for example, I'll use my own name. Hi, my name is Mariam Thea Elijah and I have a back body and I have a pelvis and legs that reach the ground. My feet touch the ground, something like that. The most important part of that being, uh, how shall I say it? It's very, it's very possibly, hi, I'm Thea Elijah and I have a back body and I have a pelvis and legs that go all the way to the ground. Um, as an energetic transmission, that gives you some choices as far as your receivership. Um, one is to go ahead and meet me there and have an interaction that's happening in this outer space and that's very exciting and dynamic and exhausting and energetically cantilever. And one of the things that I think is very important ethically is not to solicit illness for connection from each other, to be as caring as we can on a me first basis about our own health so that we can lovingly reach for connection with each other in that much healthier, much wider place. I'm Thea Elijah, I have a back body. I'm not just saying it, I'm actually on a me first basis sounding the note so that you can smell, mm. feel, meet me there. I have a pelvis. On a me first basis, I'm sounding that note as an offering and legs and feet that touch the ground. Oh, mm. ground. Yeah, I am so deeply relieved that the law of half loss 3% does apply and that we do not need to be perfect at this, but it is such a deep kindness to be intentional about it. Yeah. The simple things, the really simple things, letting each other know, are we kind of basically well-intentioned and letting each other feel that basic well-intentionedness and having each other's back. We'll get to details, but there's actually a lot of power in the simple support of, oh, there's some well-intentioned folks who've got my back. Nice feeling. Thank you. I have another round of introducing in that I want to do. And this one is very short, very simple. The words I've been using are, hi, I'm Mariam Thea Elijah, and I am seeing more with my heart than with my eyes right now. I don't know what you notice. What I notice is that most of us when we're on the computer, it's not usually a place where we have soft eyes. We're reading a report. We're pecking at the, and this is very different. And it's worth taking the time to say, I am seeing more with my heart than with my eyes right now, and feel how that shifts our relationship with each other. It's not our physical eyes it's seeing so much. I know that for me, the moment I make the shift over to seeing more with my heart than with my eyes, there's an immediate increase of joy inside of my body. I say that there are things that allow themselves to show when nobody's peering at us. <laughs> that there's that that which naturally allows itself to be seen when others are seeing with the heart rather than with the eyes is very naturally different. And that in whole heart connection, 
team support, it makes a huge difference whether we're seeing with the heart versus with those peering eyes. It also makes a big difference at the end of the call in terms of neurological fatigue to have done more of our sensing with soft eyes and mostly navigating with the heart in our very primitive way, which is a very worthwhile way to be in primitive connection. I would say that there is a great deal afoot these days that could use um, responding to from health, from supportedness, from, from what I'm gonna call a pre-intellectual intelligence that there's an awful lot of trying to figure things out with just like the very tippy top of our pyramid brain without the feeling of deep support from the base of the pyramid. And one of, I would say my greatest motivation in calling for these little support team groups is wanting to give people an opportunity to do some of their thinking and feeling about life from a basic supported place. And my sense is that there's a type of support that is already happening here right now. I mean, there's more to offer, but what's already here now in terms of base of the pyramid, very primitive levels of support. The well-meaning, I've got your back. Shifts our biology, helps us be more capable of keeping heart, taking heart, retaking heart in the places where we may have lost heart and just started trudging. Mm. And in that state, conversations go very differently. Insight is much more available. Creativity rather than reactivity begins to trickle and then flow and potentially then prosper and thrive. And that's a biological shift. It's a biological shift that especially with a little group, we can achieve far more quickly. So that's my dream in making these little groups is I'm going to be teaching some extremely basic, nothing really unfamiliar, whole heart connection practices that you can do together, a little bit of an idea of a protocol, you could call it, for a group, a type of group meeting that you guys could do together to create for each other. I don't want to call it a think tank. I want to call it a heart tank. I don't know. I don't want, we'll come up with a word for it that just supports you in being in a space of greater creativity, greater supportedness for insight, deeper access to what your heart is needing and what your life is needing. So that's, that's what I think um, I'm taken for a spin here. I have this sense that what would be a good helpful format for little group meetings would be that each meeting, one person is the one who's in charge of coaching practices. In other words, one person is the designated murmurer of 
heart voice or murmur of back body or murmur of pelvis boulder or murmur of common ground and that that person has the has the agreed upon invitation even while someone else is speaking just to add those murmurs wherever you're feeling that this could be even more deluxe than it is mm -hmm. This is not in the spirit of rescue. Oh my God, it's not in heart voice. Eh, eh, eh. No, <laughs> it may even be in heart voice, but you just have this feeling inside of a potential resplendence that will come even further. If there's just the murmur for everyone, heart voice or seeing with heart or whatever practices that your body is telling you, we could max out even more on this. That person's the, not the policeman, they're the coach for, for the full flowering of the group. Mm -hmm. All through the group, that's their role. And we rotate that role. And there's a deputy because there will be a time when that person is speaking and it's kind of their turn to do some work. So, at the, and during that time, the deputy is the murmurer. That makes sense so far? Just as starter, that we begin with that. Then the second thing that seems worth doing to me is to go around with a question while the, the practice murmurer holds practice murmuring. And while the other two people who are not speaking are just sheriff of love holding, and one person is asked the question, what does your heart need now? Mm. Not what does your bank account need? Not what do your employees need? Not what does your partner need? Not what do, do all those children need? That is secondary. Right now the question is, what does your heart need right now? And we are offering to that person the opportunity to not have a swift off the top of the head answer, but to have a field of supportiveness to ramble a little bit because a certain amount of rambling is needed. But both of the people who are not the practice murmurer at any time can just re-murmur again, what does your heart need? What does your heart need? Because it's easy to get into the tsuris and be like, Oh, like I'm going crazy and kind of spill it out on the table. Some of that may well be needed. However, in the midst of that spilling onto the table, it is very important that the purpose of the spilling is very, very clear. It's to loosen the area around the heart. heart. So as to be able to feel for the answer to the question, what does your heart need right now? And the answer may come as a single word, peace, confidence, creativity, breathing space, courage. We don't know what the answer, or it may be a sentence, most likely to be some sort of quality. And when that person's heart has identified the quality, all members can take a moment to go deep into cup that runneth over inadequacy and say to themselves, let's say it's, let's say it's spaciousness, to say, Use your own language, but that bow in the back of the heart and that deep inadequacy. Oh, my beloved source, 
I certainly would not want what this beloved needs of spaciousness to be limited by what I know or what I am capable of. But please make me a cup that runneth over of spaciousness and fill me first and widen my cup and help me receive a huge amount into my own aching biology, the quality of spaciousness that I cannot generate, but that I can open to and ask for and be a cup that runneth over into this group heart and go ahead and be as me first as possible about it. Take a few minutes on that. Not to completion, because that's the person's job. Our main thing we're doing is helping them find the channel. Mm. Once they've found the channel, they can, they'll be able to stay with it. We're not here to fix or complete a healing. We're here to create the precursor states for a healing. Then we can let it move on and move on to the next person, holding them in group heart and asking, what does your heart need right now? And giving them a chance to loosen around it and a certain amount of garbage may get coughed out. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's appropriate all for the sake of keeping on coming back to the question. What does your heart need right now? Not what do they need? Not what does this and that? What does your heart need right now? And if the answer is courage, then everybody then says, okay, with all the parts of me that need courage, I would not want what this beloved receives of the experience of courage to be limited by what I already got inside of me. Please make me a cup that runneth over. I open myself to being remade by the spirit of courage itself. So as to be servant to courage in this beloved. And at a certain point that beloved will not say, yeah, sure, I'm complete for all time, but I got it. I feel the wavelength. I feel connected with courage. It doesn't have to be a complete healing, but I got the rope. I'm in the beam. And so on around the quartet. In speaking about what our heart needs, this is a time when especially it's a very good idea to be seeing more with our heart than with our eyes. Yeah, yeah, because we want to be seen, but with the heart. One of the things that I'm hearing clearly demonstrating is sometimes you need to know the South to find the North. That. <laughs> In order to know what we need, we really need to feel and be in touch with what it is that we need it for. <laughs> yeah. And that's usually what we are in touch with first. Like, here's what I need it for. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's so And now I don't need to hang out there. <laughs> I need to hang out there. But you need to know which direction south is in order to yep. turn and say, this is what I need it for. This is the south. Where's the North Star? Like, where, where, what, what, yeah. Are, yeah. And that, Beautiful. It's very different than wallowing. This is not wallowing. It's going to where the help is needed. Because where else are you going to figure out what it is that you need? I am suggesting this as part of a format. If you did only this, it would be good. 